Hello, it's Jilly here from Funcross to do at home.com with another video especially for you. Last time I showed you how to make these pendants using salt dough, and although these pendants look absolutely fine, I did run into some problems with some of the other ones I made, and I did promise you another video showing you how I improved on the salt dough technique. So here's the new video especially for you. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get regular updates of all my new videos. And please don't forget to like and share and leave a comment underneath if you have anything to say. So, let's jump in. These are some of the new pendants that I made and you can see here that they're much finer looking. They have a much more delicate look, although they are quite robust. I'm going to start this time by actually showing you how to make the salt dough just in case there's anyone out there that doesn't know how to make it. You need one cup of plain flour, one cup of ordinary table salt and you need roughly one cup of water. So you mix the salt and the flour together thoroughly and then start to add the water just bit by bit and mix your flour and salt to a smooth consistency adding more water when you need it and that's basically all there is to it you don't want to knead it too much because what you don't want is loads of air in there because you don't want the you don't want them to rise so just knead it the absolute minimum amount the main issue that I had with the last lot of pendants that I made, or the ones that didn't come out very well, was that they were much too thick and chunky, so I needed to actually make this dough much um, much thinner. So I bought one of these rolling pins that's intended for cake making, and these purple rubber rings on either end give you two different levels um, that you can roll out your dough, and the dough is all going to be exactly the same thickness so I'd highly recommend getting one of these rolling pins. Once you've cut off how much dough you want to use just put the rest into a, a plastic bag. Make sure you use plenty of flour when you're rolling out. All the stuff that you see me use in this video, if you go, if you want to buy online, if you go to my Amazon.com shop, you will find a link to my Amazon shops, both the UK one and the .com shop. Um, you will find links on my blog, which is www.funcraftstodoathome.com. You will find these rolling pins and all sorts of cookie cutters that you can use to um, make your shapes. Now, this was how I got the texture on the lovely bluey green pendants. I bought this, It's again, it's a rolling pin that's intended for um, rolling out textured icing on cakes. It's a fantastic little rolling pin and it gave my pendants really lovely texture. So this, this pendant is one that I've just cut out um, just using a knife to a shape that I wanted. I used the round cookie cutter to make um, indentations. So I mean really the sky is the limit with, with, with that. I just showed you that one so that you can get an idea of how you can get texture into your pendants. Bake your pendants in the oven at 100 degrees centigrade for anything from two and a half to three hours. You must keep checking them all the time. You want them to bake slowly, which is why we use such a low temperature in a long time. You don't want them to rise, you don't want them to burn. If you follow those instructions, your pendant should come out nice and flat like mine. Here are the textured ones I did. And you can also sand your pendants. I would highly recommend sanding them. I didn't sand mine as smoothly as I could have done because I was in a hurry to get this film done. So just spend some time making them nice and smooth. If 
If you have any pendants like this that are slightly thicker, this is the one that I I cut by hand. You will you need to just sand the edges to get rid of that texture around the edges. And then comes the fun part. Once you've got your pendants nice and smooth, you can start to decorate them. You can see here they are very strong. If you if you tap them on the table or against each other, you can hear how strong they are. Okay, so I use this metallic green and metallic blue paints for these these textured pendants. You can see here what I'm doing. I don't need to tell you. I don't need to tell you. I'm painting. So you paint the fronts however you want them, and then you paint the backs and the sides, let them dry between each coat, if you do more than one coat. I used this metallic gold acrylic paint to get the gold effect on the textured pendants. And you can see here how you go about doing that. The trick is to get a very, very tiny amount of paint on your finger very tiny amount, blot it off if you have to, and then you just rub your finger very, very lightly just over the textured part so that the paint is only picked up by the raised areas. And you, you know I do this a lot in my videos. It's actually very, very effective. And I'm doing the same with the one that I cut by hand. You could really have fun with this if you cut your own shapes and use various tools to make texture. You can make some fantastic pendants. So these next ones that are painted turquoise, I love turquoise and gold. So use some of these uh, peel-offs, um, I think they're called Glitterations by Nita. And... Um, I used two different techniques with this. I used one where I actually stuck the uh, peel-offs directly onto the pendant bases and left them on there, which is what I'm just showing you now. You need to use a, a scalpel to get them off the backing and then you can use your, your scalpel to kind of help you guide it down onto the pendant base. Now this pendant base was probably just slightly too small really for me to use this particular peel off but with a bit of kind of jigging it around I managed to get the whole thing on there and then I you know you can add whatever embellishments you want to. Sky's the limit. These are just ideas that I'm giving you but you know you can go off and get your own Go and buy, you know, your own peel-offs. Whatever designs you want, you know. Then I used Anita's Clear Gloss to paint over the top to make sure that the peel-offs are stuck down permanently. Now you will notice that I haven't actually put these, the very, very thick glossy layers on these pendants that I where I put a very, very thick layer and then leave it to dry. It didn't work out too well for some reason when I tried that with these pendants. So what worked best was me actually just painting a layer on here. I did about three coats, I think, over the top of these. For some reason, when I, when I, when I did the very, very, very thick layers, it didn't work. So this is another technique that I'm using. Um, I painted the pendants gold first. Then I stuck down little bits and pieces as you can see me doing here. Then I painted over the whole lot. 
this was just an idea that I had. I didn't know if it would work. It's not come out too badly. So you let them dry and then you take the tip of your scalpel and you just flip off the peel-offs revealing the gold underneath. Now when this works it's brilliant and you'll see here this one worked really well once I can get it off there. So you can see the difference, there's one there with the peel off left on and varnished over the top and then there's one where I just simply used the peel off as a stencil really. So they both look very effective. Now this one didn't work so well but it ends up with a kind of a, a grungy look to it which you know some people may like that. I wasn't too keen, I thought it looked a bit scrappy so I had to actually fill in where the paint had not, you know, where it hadn't kind of, where it hadn't kind of worked, I took a very fine paintbrush and I painted in the gold where it, um, where it hadn't worked properly. You'll see next, you'll see the shot coming up where, yeah, here, I, I kind of painted over to neaten it up a bit. So, you know, you can see, you can play around with that technique. You you know, this is the first time that I'd actually done it. So, okay, so very, very quickly, I'm going to show you how I make my pendant bales. Now, there are lots of people online that do this absolutely expertly. I am not an expert. My bales really need a lot of work. I'm just showing you the basic technique. I'm not even using the proper pliers. I don't actually have um, the proper pliers that I need to do this um, to do this well. So I would suggest that you Google how to make pendant bales, and you will find there's lots of people online that are really, really good at this. Mine are really quite scrappy, and I mean this. These pliers are not the pliers that you would use. They're not jeweler's pliers. I think they belong to my husband but you can get the general idea of, of what to do do you really need some I think they're called flat nose pliers again you can google that I will have the proper jewelers pliers that you need in my Amazon shop so just go along to my blog um, where you'll get the links to my Amazon shops. There'll be a link to my blog on the end screen of this uh, video. This is where you really need to have the proper pliers because the tapered ends of these you know, I managed to make the bales, but they would have been a lot better if I hadn't used tapered pliers. But you get the general idea, you know. This is basically what you're trying to make. And from another video, I'm just showing you how I stuck them on there. You just glue them onto the back. Here's mine, all done. These are really awful pennants I made last time. I didn't even I didn't even put them in the last video because they were so dreadful. They were much too chunky, the um, glazing didn't work, it went all patchy and white. So you can see the difference here, the one on the right is much much better, it's much finer, it's much flatter. So yeah, I mean I did refine the technique quite a lot. And as Debbie, one of my lovely viewers said, these are just lessons that we're learning and and she's absolutely right so thank you for that debbie um you know we we find out as we go along what works what doesn't work and um 
you know, I just, I share with you um, what works for me and sometimes I share what doesn't work. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get updates of all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.